and welcome to GeForce. My name is Megan and we're gonna have so much fun today. Here at GeForce, we have some things we love to do, like learning about God and being leaders, but the biggest thing we love to do is laugh. Okay, I'm not talking about the traditional <laughs> uh, laugh. No, no, no. Here at GeForce, we spell it L-A-F. L stands for love. We wanna show love to everyone around us. A stands for accept. God made everyone unique and special, and we want to accept everyone the way they are. Lastly, F stands for forgive. Everyone makes mistakes, so it's important to learn to forgive each other. Like last week, I was walking home from the store, and there was this giant puddle right in the road. And the next thing I knew, a car was coming really fast, and I was standing right beside the puddle. The car went by, and I got soaked. Now, I had two choices. One, I could be really mad at the car driver, thinking he did this on purpose and let it ruin my day. Or two, I could forgive the driver and not let one bad thing, that was probably an accident, ruin my day. You know, when we forgive, it's not just for the other person. Forgiveness also helps us not feel heavy and angry on the inside. So I chose option two and forgave the driver. After that, I went on to have a fantastic day, even if I was a little wet. You know, while we love to laugh, there's something else that we love to do here at GeForce, memorizing God's word. That means it's time for our Bible challenge. Hey everyone, we're so glad you're here with us at GeForce. This summer, we're finding out how we can move. Welcome to Ready, Set, Move. I'm so ready to follow Jesus here, there, and everywhere because I've got faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. In fact, that's what we find in our memory verse for this month, Hebrews 11 verse 1. Check it out. Faith means being sure of the things we hope for, and faith means knowing that something is real even if we do not see it. When you choose to follow Jesus, you never know where He might lead you but you can move by faith because you know that He is with you no matter what. Now it's time to stand up and get ready for one of my favorite parts of service, praise and worship. Let's do it. The fight is on.
<laughs> oh man, this is amazing. Uh, tell me about it, recreating the Jules Verne classic around the world in eight seconds. This seems crazy. Uh, it is. Okay, here we go. You ready? Yep. Really fast. I I didn't see anything. Yeah, me neither. Wait a second. I think we got the title wrong. Huh? It's not around the world in eight seconds. It's, it's around, around the, the world, world in eighty seconds. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. No! I'm Brandon. I'm John. And welcome to the So and So Show. We're gonna have to get through the show quick because my friend John here has a flight to catch. Yes, I He's do. He's going on a huge trip. Uh -huh, Are yeah. you excited? Uh, kinda. What do you mean, kinda? You've been looking forward to this trip for weeks. Well, you're packed, right? Not yet. Not yet, John. You have to leave for the airport right after the show. <laughs> Come on, I'll help you pack. No. Come on. What are you doing? Come on, I we gotta go pack. I... No. No. Nope. What is, what's going on? What is wrong? Oh! What is wrong with you? Come on! What's wrong? <clears throat> John, is your hand glued to the table? Why? You know what, it doesn't matter. Come on, we gotta get you out of here. <laughs> I've already tried. Do or do not, there is no try. No, 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 ah! No, no, no. Okay, three, two, one. Try to put some pressure, here we go. Pull in the table, come on. Yep, yep, here, we go. here we go. One, two, three. No, no, wait, wait. We do not. And my flight leaves in five, four, three, two, one. I have a second hand on my digital watch. I'm so sorry, buddy. Yeah, I just don't know what to do. I mean, it was gonna be an amazing trip. It was gonna have everything. You know, museums, the zoo, Ooh. a train ride, really? surfing, a Broadway musical. Where is this? And so much more. What if, what if we didn't have to go? Huh? Or what, what if I brought your trip to you? Welcome to the greatest road trip ever! Ladies and gentlemen, straight from somewhere near the street of Broadway, or at least within 852.7 miles of it, the newest production of Felines. Turn your face to Earth's satellite. Let your remembrance lead you. Open the door and go in. If you find it, a new sun will shine again. Feline. Wait. Whoa! 
Everybody's going surfing! Yeah. Surfing so and so! Whoa! Wipe out! Welcome to the original golden age of travel. Horse and buggy? No, I'm talking about trains. <laughs> I want to see a panda. Oh, oh he's so cute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, what'd you think? Almost as good as the real thing. <laughs> All right, so, so what do you want to do now? Um, well, something I could never do on my road trip. What's that? It's Bible story time with Kellen. Kellen, how's it going? Good, good. How's it going with you? Ah, uh, just, you know, hanging around, not really uh, going anywhere. Feeling like there's no way out, but I, like I'm just gonna be here forever. Well, I don't know if this will help, but I do have a story about someone who didn't seem like they had a way out. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. Take it away, Kellen. Please. Are you okay? Yeah. All right. Our story today comes from the book of Acts. Jesus had been raised from the dead and his followers had received the Holy Spirit. But then some crazy, not so good things happened to them things that could have made it hard for them to keep their faith. King Herod was having Jesus followers thrown in prison. And that's where we pick up today's story with Laundry Theater. The Apostle Peter was one of Jesus' most devoted followers and a leader of the early church. Peter was one of the people who had been thrown into prison and he was guarded by several guards. In the middle of the night, while Peter was sleeping, suddenly, an angel appeared. The angel told Peter to quickly get up, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. The angel had Peter put on his coat and his sandals, and he snuck past the guards out of the prison. Peter thought he was seeing a vision. In the moment, he may not have had the faith that this was actually happening. He was stuck and he couldn't believe that there was a way out. But whether or not he believed it, Peter had gotten out of prison and he was walking along the street when the angel left him. That's when Peter finally realized what was happening and he ran to a house belonging to someone named Mary. Now, there were a lot of Jesus followers meeting there. So Peter ran up and he knocked on the door. Inside, people were praying. And someone named Rhoda went to answer the door. Rhoda went and told the others that Peter was at the door. But they didn't believe her though. They thought she was out of her mind. But Peter kept knocking until they finally opened the door and they were amazed. Peter told them to keep quiet. Then he told them the amazing story of how God broke him out of prison. After that, Peter went on to a different location to continue to do the good work of Jesus. Wow, incredible story. Definitely. I mean, God broke him out of prison. Can God break you out of almost anything? Like your hand being glued to your desk? Well, sometimes God uses other people to help when you're stuck. In fact, one thing you can try is if you take some- No worries, all good here. Thanks, Kellen. Uh, yeah, sure thing. See you next time. Later. I think he was about to give me an idea how to get out of this situation. Yeah, but I thought it might ruin some things. Ruin what, the rest of my day? No, this, uh, reveal the question. <laughs> what oh. does it feel like to be stuck? Wow, that's convenient. Tell me about it. Uh, well, for me, in a very real way, feeling stuck is hard. It's mm -hmm. frustrating and I don't know what to do. Yeah, but there are other ways that people feel stuck. Uh, maybe you feel stuck because 
you can't quite find a group of friends that you fit in with. Or maybe you're really having problems getting along with someone and you don't know how things will get better. Yeah, we can feel stuck in different ways. So find someone you trust and tell them when you're feeling stuck. Yeah, and remember, when you put your faith in Jesus, it can help remind you that even when you feel stuck, God is with you. That's true. Well, that's all the time we have, but we'll see you next time on the So and So Show. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <sighs> wait, 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 wait. Is that a... We're gonna get you out of here, buddy. Okay, I trust you. <laughs> it worked! <laughs> hey, you wanna play ping pong? Absolutely. Oh, I missed. Oh! Ready? Yeah. Three left. Oh! Game point. Game over. Yeah. What do we do now? Hey, let's go rowing. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the boat? <laughs>today and you're wondering who this God person is that we're talking about. If that's you, I want to tell you that God loves you so much that he wanted to have a relationship with you. That's right, the creator of the universe wanted to have a relationship with you. But you see, there was a problem. We all have sinned. Now sin is the unkind and wrong choices that we make. And that sin separated us from a relationship with God. Think of this sin almost like chains or handcuffs that were keeping us away from God. But God had a plan and he sent us the best present ever. His only son, Jesus, came here to live in this world and live a perfect life with absolutely no sin. 
That's right, Jesus never made a mistake. And he loved us so much that he went to the cross and he died and came back to life to forgive all of us. And because he did this, we are forgiven for all of the sin that we'd ever do in our lives. Now, it might help you to think about it like this. When Jesus died and came back to life, he became the key that unlocked those chains that sin had put us in. Because of what Jesus did for us, we no longer had to be separated from him. Jesus did this because he loves us so much that he wanted to have a relationship with us too. But you know what? He won't force his way into your life. You get to make that choice. And if you've never asked Jesus to come into your life, you can do it in three easy steps. We do it like this, A, B, C. The first is to admit. Admit that you've sinned and made mistakes. B is believe. Believe that Jesus is God's son and that his death and resurrection paid for your sins. And C is to choose to live a life for Jesus. When you choose to start a relationship with Jesus, he goes with you everywhere because he wants to make sure that you live the best life ever. Now we're gonna pray all together. And if you wanna begin this relationship with Jesus, all you have to do is repeat these words after me and believe it with your heart. Dear Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want to be your friend forever. Forgive me of every mistake that I've made. I choose to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. That is so awesome. You know, if you made that choice today to start a relationship with Jesus, don't keep it to yourself. Tell an adult in your life because that is the most incredible choice that you could ever make. And you know what? When you've told that adult in your life, ask them to email us at kids at springschurch.com or reach out to us on social media because we would love to give you a Bible and tell you a little bit more about that choice you made. Also, ask that adult to subscribe to the Springs Kids YouTube channel to make sure you can keep watching these lessons and learn more about God. Well, you know what? I've had so much fun here with you guys. I can't wait to see you next week. Thank you.